So Matt, and also guest for the week, have either of you ever been curious what the movie Groundhog's Day would be like, but with racism? No, not at all. Yeah, no, not definitely at not. All. Well, it doesn't matter because tonight we're going to discuss the movie that created this podcast, Two Distinct Strangers. I'm Chad. And I'm Matt. Whether it's your 50th episode or your first, Matt and I thank you so much for downloading our podcast. We used to talk about this at work. feels a little different matt is that some new music you know we switch it up i see Good i stuff. see we got, we got a new intro you know? we got uh some new cover art that you made i see you hey man you know i'm just trying to you know we i didn't think this was gonna last this long so you know we put i put the bare minimum in bare minimum effort in there but now since uh we've been doing this i i need to come correct and put 100 percent into this that's fair. That's fair. It, it's a, it's a good time. Also, I um, you know, since this is the fiftieth, you know, we're we're gonna, we're gonna have a toast, right? Yes. <laughs> I appreciate you getting that water in, keeping it nice and clean, unlike some people. Mm, uh, yeah. that's I had a I had a very uh very late late night last night. I I hear that. Very, it was yeah, um, I was. Mm-hmm. I was very intoxicated. I don't even remember <laughs> how I got home. But that's, a, but that's a good thing, though, because even though my brain wasn't working, I did everything I needed to do. Took my <laughs> shoes off before I got in the house. I got basically buck naked. I took everything out of my pockets, put it on the table, and I went to sleep. And the wife came home. She was like, yeah, all your stuff was laid out. You was naked. Well, not naked. I had my drawers on, but I took all my clothes <laughs> off and everything. And, you know, I did, I did what was responsible. I put my clothes in a dirty hamper. Like, my brain was still working, even though it was on low. <laughs> it was good. It was on E. Um, right. Yeah, it, it was barely making it. So, so I'm glad I, I that do... taxi driver, we talked about last time, I'm glad that taxi driver did not take advantage of me. Oh, or, driving around and stuff. I don't, know if he did. I don't know if he did, but. I don't feel any different. Also, I'm gonna be honest. I I may have cut that part out of the video or the episode. I can't remember. Oh well, then am I? We can cut that part too. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we're trying not to do many that many cuts this week. Gotcha, um. Gotcha. Okay. So we, but I do want to address this before we introduce this week's guest. So your internet's out. So you're on your phone right now. Yes, and I apologize if the sound quality and everything is not like that. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, I, my internet's out, and if the sounds magical reason it comes back on then i'll switch over but if not then i'll be on my phone all right all right but uh this week we have a very special guest um we would like to introduce someone that has worked with us and that we both kept in touch with um after we left and she is part of the reason why we are in your ears right now. Uh, we would like to welcome Madge to the hey podcast. Hey, everybody. Thank you, guys. Now, oh, technically, this is, technically, this is not your first time being on the show because we did a special episode earlier in the week. But, um, but I want to thank you for being on an official episode and specifically this one. Yeah, no, you're welcome. So before we get into like our true origin story, why don't you, why don't we talk about, you know, um, we used to work together, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, we used to work together. So chilling at work in our office. Yes, those were times. Uh, Do you have any stories from your time working with us? Yeah, you know, I got a few. Let's see if I want to share any. But yeah, I got a few (laughs) stories. Um, Let's see. Me, I always liked Matt, but Chad, you was a little on the fence because you was a real butthole at first. Look, you're not telling me anything I didn't hear when I was at that job or when I invited people on this podcast and they told me to my face. All right, you know, I'm not the, hearing people anything. People don't now. know how I felt. So for me, people, <laughs> that listeners, Chad was a real butthole, okay? So you have to, Chad's the type of person now that, that you have to warm up to. So first it was like, is this dude serious? I don't really know if I want to mess with him. I don't want no information from him. Like, oh my God, he's working my nerves. And then after that, it's like, oh, he's funny. Oh, he's a cool dude. 
we like Ninja Turtles. I should wear my Ninja Turtle shirt. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> yes, I Ninja forgot Turtles. about that. And then he just rubbed off on me. We would always just go to his cubicle and I would be like, hey, hey, Chad, guess what? So I sit, chat, and, and chat it up. And Matt said, like, cat a corner away. And then Matt would come in. And we would just all have a good little conversation until the supervisor got mad at us and told us to disperse and get back to work. Those were good times. I was. And then um, once, um, blah, blah, blah. and then once we got um, dis- distributed to other parts of the building, and I always know that once um, I got closer to Madge, I used to always go see Madge whenever I had like a break or whatever. I used to go sit, go sit uh, on Madge's desk behind her while she worked, and uh, we just do chop it up all the time. Yeah. Yeah. good conversations it was a, it was a, those are really good times like i wouldn't i wouldn't try and go back to like recreate any of that but like i just appreciate like the memories we we had you know yeah i thought it was really cool how all of us at the time were married and were into um you know interracial marriages and i was like oh well, that's cool they can kind of understand where i'm coming from and so i thought that was a great way of that we connected as well yeah right so um, we started a group chat at some point in time. Um, I don't remember when, but we would talk a lot in that group chat about different things, about what was going on at the time with us or like movies we saw. And I sent you guys, no, or yeah, I sent you guys a trailer for a movie on Amazon. Sorry, it was a TV show on Amazon called Them. And this show was about a black family being harassed in the 1950s in an all white suburb. Mm -hmm. And we had a really interesting conversation about how we just don't want to watch black trauma. Correct. Yeah. (laughs) And so, you know, we had that conversation and then like a couple of days later or whatever, um somebody put the trailer for tonight's movie two distinct two distinct strangers in the um in the group chat and we were all like what the heck is this like this is the exact thing that we were talking about right. so we were like okay let's all give it a chance so we all watched it and i had such an opinion after watching that movie that i was like I am going to start a podcast just to talk about this movie. Mm-hmm. And at exactly one year later, here we are. <laughs> That's funny. That's um, cool. So we're not really going to get into our, our specific thoughts on the movie yet. That's for the end. That's our teaser. So we got some other stuff to talk about. Like, Wait, so when you had this thought to mm-hmm. create this podcast in your mind, was it going to be a single person podcast or were you like, I need to have a, I want to have a guest. And uh, basically what I want to say, how far down the list was it to where you like, you know what? All these other people canceled. All right, let me try Matt now. Well, no. So I was, th- my initial thing was like, it would be the three of us, but my hesitation in bringing Madge in at that point was because she was very pregnant at the time. And I knew, and also like you, your hours, like just like when you were up and not up and all that stuff, it was just like really weird match. And to like handle that with the time zone difference with you, I was like, well, I get it going with, with Matt and we'll have match on at some point. And we've had conversations throughout the past year about you coming on, but something's always come up lady right yeah true sorry so no i mean it's nothing against it so it's like in my mind it was always matt and like i always wanted to have you as part of the equation it's just the timing is was not ideal yeah i understand it's, i don't think it's not it, it 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 makes it it makes a good story that the creation of this podcast and the story behind this podcast and then for her to come back quote unquote officially on our 50th and our one year anniversary for it to be Madge, it works out perfectly. Right. I mean, granted, we asked her like six months ago to block this date off so that she could be. <laughs> That's right. And I did. 
and I did. So. so thank you so much, man. You're welcome. So it's it's a it's funny that you're in your nursery right now. Um, tell us how has the search for daycare been for your son? Oh my goodness, it's been horrible. Well, luckily we don't go back to work till July. But thinking about huh, just looking at daycares or nannies, if you just want to have a nanny here, that that stuff is expensive. Yeah. So we're trying to weigh our options. I, I didn't know that it, it costs just so much. It's different from, you know, when I had my 17 year old, 17 years ago, it was expensive, but not like it is now. Like that inflation, man. Yeah. That's a whole house mortgage. Dang. Yeah. So like hypothetically, okay. like I have no idea. Just give me a, a general thing about how much is a nanny these days. It's like 1100 a month. Whoa. Yeah, I mean that's basically because I I want to say uh we pay like thirteen hundred a month I think. Yeah, that's what you told me. No, I'm sorry, daycare. I'm sorry. Oh, daycare, daycare. That's why I said that's mortgage. That's your. Well, you say how much? You pay thirteen hundred a month. Wow. Oh, that's yeah. a baby. Okay, okay. I'm like, hold up. I don't pay that much, but you know, <laughs> my kid is just in daycare though. But uh, it's supposed to get cheaper when she turns two in June. Supposed to be. Okay. How, how much cheaper? Not really. Exactly. Two hundred dollars. <laughs> it's gonna be. It's gonna. I think like for the year, I think it's gonna go down like maybe fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. It's it's not a lot. It's not gonna go down a lot. It's not a lot. Yeah. We so, need yeah. her to go to actual school before exactly. we can. <laughs> Come on, I'll wait for you to get five. You five yet? <laughs> Definitely. Like love our kids, but that stuff is expensive. That's a, like I said, a mortgage, a whole extra. Right. right that's a whole trip to japan oh we were talking <laughs> about that before that. we hit the before we hit record like i was saying like hey you know i'm thinking about you know making this happen next year matt was all like yeah about that man um they're not letting tourists up in here no oh, not they at all no nah, they they haven't unless you uh got ken here they not letting you come through. Just like if you was like, I just want to visit. Nah, you have to have some kind of relation, uh, be related to a Japanese national. That's the only oh, way gosh. you get through these days. Um, dang. Yeah. You know it's your brother, so you good. Your sister. Well, right the, the pro- well, yeah, the problem is Matt is not a citizen. His wife is a citizen, uh-huh. and I'm not related to her. You even MJ- if I even if I say uh, Matt is my brother. Yeah. Look, you can say you MJ uncle because don't he got dual citizenship? Oh, hold yep. up, hold up, right, hold no. up. Okay, all right, we 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 yeah. cooking a little something right now. Okay, right, we, 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 right, we got the plan going. All right. <laughs> so, what what have you guys decided? Are you still just mulling it over about nanny? We are just mulling it over. Luckily, we have till July eighth to figure it out, but it's like weighing me down. Like, I don't know what we're gonna do. So it's been talks like, oh, should I? Should we try to like do like a uh before shift like a day shift and a night shift okay. um as far as like both of us splitting up our shifts or or just like we're trying to figure it out it sucks yeah so have you gotten on anybody's wait list because i remember for our daughter uh she was born in june and we were on the we signed up at the daycare like in january wow. and, it was- and then covid happened and so we were like okay that's we're gonna delay her starting so we reached out to them the following year like in february and she couldn't start until april oh wow well yeah i need to get on it then Thanks i mean because you know it's like they they're they have so many slots in each yeah. class so you know you gotta wait for a kid to leave yeah no i get it i forgot that part oh but matt so um since you don't have to worry about um, daycare and all this stuff, how's everything been going on with your son? So, um, hey, anniversary podcast. So you guys remember how I used to talk about how my son used to be in kickboxing? Yeah, kickboxing. So, so I listened to the first episode and that's when he started kickboxing one year ago today. So yes, because you know, to build up confidence and so he doesn't get picked on things like that well it is paying off and my son got suspended from school for fighting oh man 
So <clears throat> did he start the so, fight or finish it at least? Uh, did he finish the fight? Did he finish the fight? <laughs> uh, he, uh, we'll just say at the end of the story, the other kid cried. My son did not cry. Well, that's good. Thing. Right. So and then it comes like, and then this draws about trust to where my son said something, how it happened. The school said something else, how it happened. So I always tell my son, you tell me the truth. And I will defend you against anybody in this world. Now, if you lie to me, then we're going to go all the other problems. So fast forward to last week when they were on spring break. And we get a call from daycare now, not the school, daycare, that my son was fighting. So I was like, okay. So I called my son. I'm like, hey, what happened? He said this guy pushed him blah, 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 uh, like that. So I get to the daycare. They have like a written note saying, my son pushed his kid first. That's how it started. Um, so I'm like, hold up, Matthew. And this is in daycare in front of the staff and everything else. I'm like, so wait, you told me that this kid pushed you. This paper is saying you pushed him. So which one is, is correct? He said, no, the kid pushed me first and blah, blah, blah. So I was like, hold up. Uh, any of the staff, any of you guys saw what happened? And they were like, oh, no, this happened early in the morning. You know, they had different shifts or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And they how the director was there, and she checked the video and saw what happened. There's video? So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, Matthew, you have another chance. They had this on video. Are you telling the truth, or are they lying? He's like, I'm telling the truth. And I was like, okay. Um, can you have the director, once you get in, give me a call and we'll check the tape and everything else like that. So they said, okay, fine. So we get in the car and I'm like, Matthew, you know, they have video. Are you sticking with that story? He was like, yes. And I was like, okay, if you tell the truth, everything's good. And I'll call, I'll go up there and tell it, these teachers, they motherfucking liars and everything else like that. Now, if you if you lying and I have to go and I go in there and I have to fool in there to defend you and everything else like that and it turns out to be lying and it's on video, I'm gonna have to fool on you. <laughs> and he stuck with that story, so I'm like, okay. <clears throat> Next day, the director calls me X Y Z. We talk about it. Long story short, longer story short, my son was telling the truth. Come on, see, that's so. And it's good to let to know when your uh, son is telling the truth because it's like, um, basically, you want to build trust, you want them to be yeah. able to talk to them and everything yeah. else like that. So I was happy he was not lying because if he would have been lying, I don't know what the fuck I would have done. Because I'm like, you don't lie to me in front of these people's faces and then directly in my lie. eyes, look at me and lie to me, even when I tell you that you motherfuckers have it on video. But nah, it's okay. So it's a process. It's a process yeah. with kids. So I say all that to say, well, Max, you know, part of that, you better go through it again. And Chad, you'll be going through this where when your kids start lying to you, it's a whole nother thing that you have to deal with. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to My that. My teenager told me a whole, he snuck out the house to go to his job, but he had on his new tennis shoes and his new hat. Well, no, as soon as he got out the, got out the house, he takes his hat out from like up under the jacket. <laughs> <laughs> when he gets home, I was like, well, well, why you got that hat on? And he was like, oh, I was just rocking it or whatever. I said, did you leave the house like that? He told me, yeah. I was like, no, you didn't. I saw you on the camera and you took it off from the jacket and did it like this. Are you doing it in front of the camera, man? Come on. You know where the camera's at. <laughs> it's the craziest thing. They just be lying about all types of little stuff. Like, I saw right. you on the camera. <laughs> yeah. The camera's come in handy. That's real. I don't, I'm gonna need to get, yeah. Because what is he? He's about to go to sixth grade next year, so and he'll be up in in uh, junior high school. So I know all bad things about to happen. Well, there might be some good stuff too. You got a good boy. Oh yeah, At least yeah. Good, so. I like to think so. We'll, we'll see. Because also, <laughs> we just gave him uh, his first cell phone. Oh, oh snap. What kind he of phone like, you get? That thing. He probably on Pornhub um, right now. Oh no, <laughs> I restricted all of that stuff. Uh, 
because he has an iPhone XR because nice. the wife upgraded to a 13. Mm-hmm. So we gave him there. So I, I put all the restrictions on there. Um, Good luck I'm just that. waiting to see what happens. Like, I, I don't know. This is some new. So because we always be worried about like, because once we drop him off at the bus stop, like, for example, if the bus doesn't come or anything yeah. like that, he has no house key, he has no phone. So we always be concerned about what will be uh, what will happen or or even if he's in trouble. So now we're like uh, he's been saying he he's gonna be more responsible. He wants all this stuff. So we tried it out and see. Well, good luck with that, man. Chad, you like being a girl dad? Is it I, fun? I love it. Like I I I um you know I, I can foresee like some gender things that I don't care for like not with her like with other people Uh-oh. like um hmm? give me an example so give there's me. a um uh, a little boy at her daycare that um he always says hi and says her name uh-huh. and uh he's a really friendly little boy I like him and um apparently um uh, samantha she went to go pick um our, our daughter up one day and the people that work there are, were saying oh hey so that kid that's like the only thing he knows how to say and like his parents came here and he's like they're like why is he saying hi my daughter's name all the time like why why isn't he saying mom or dad or whatever <laughs> and so like our joke is like he likes her like i don't think he likes her like well i think he likes her like as a friend but like nothing more Maybe and so like, like her name. It's a cool name. And so like I told like relatives this and they're like, oh yeah, that's her little boyfriend. This, that, and now then I'm like, why can't she just have like a friend that's a boy? Oh, nah, like men and women, men, men and women can't just be friends. Right. That's and so like my thing is like genuinely, if they were older, like I know my daughter, and I can tell like she would be friends with him, but she wouldn't like him like that. And so, like, me personally, I'm not threatened because, like, I can just kind of tell, like, what her vibe is going to be like as she gets older. And so I, I could tell it would be a situation where, like, he's, like, friend zone hard as hell. And he's just clawing his way out. And she's like, okay, but anyway, this other stuff over here. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I'm not worried about that. But it's just, like, I don't really like that. Oh, that's her little boyfriend. Like, and, like, real talk, like, like just to... If, if I can get my soapbox for, out for a second, like, I don't even know if she will be straight and I don't care if she, she grows up to be a lesbian or whatever, but it's just like, let's not put any of that on her, you know, like whatever she will be, whatever she will be. Yeah, that's true. That's up there with, uh, what Lil Nas X said. Did you see that post? He said, would you rather have a gay son or a thought daughter? My dumb bubble was like, well, the son can still be a thought and a daughter, she can be a thought that's gay. I was like, does it really matter? Right. So then the guy was like, that's messed up. Y'all really talking about this on this uh, on this feed or whatever. But I just thought it was a stupid question. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I, I was like, thoughts be gay. <laughs> but like, yeah. So like, I really enjoy being a girl dad. I, um, I, 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 I'm having fun. Oh, that's good. Um, I'm sleeping a little bit better. Um, Man, this time last sleep. year, I was complaining about my daughter not sleeping. Um, I put her in bed and she was like, mm, I guess I'll sleep. <laughs> she she I, went right I, to bed. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. He gets more sleep during the day. He gets the best sleep in the daytime. And like at nighttime, it's like, what are you doing? He's like rolling around. He's is, like, he, oh, is, he, is he Batman? Like, I don't know what's going on, but <laughs> the sleep during the nighttime is not where it's at right now. So I can't wait for next year to be like you. Yeah, it's it, it's been a long road to get to this point. But like the thing is like, oh, she is literally like a rooster. When she's up in the morning, you better get up. So you get that yeah. 4 30, 5 a.m. call. It's time to go. Yeah, man, 4 30. <laughs> but, you know, that, but, you know, I, I, I spend my evenings wisely. I do a podcast and you know that's a good that's a good use of my time, right? I could be sleeper. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I watched a movie this week. Um, I guess sorta in the realm of children. Um, uh, it's called Master on Amazon Prime. Have either of you all heard of it? I have no. heard of it, but I have it's in my watch list. I haven't watched it yet. Uh, it has Regina Hall in it. She's the biggest name in it. Yeah. Uh, she's also a producer. And it follows three women, three black women, um, 
Regina Hall is the master of of the house. So like, you know how like in college you have like dorms that are named after like people either that gave a whole bunch of money or maybe famous people that used to go to the school. So mm-hmm. she's master over one of those houses. Mm-hmm. And then you've got another woman that's like a, just a regular professor trying to get tenure. And then you've got a young black student. And this is a predominantly white college um, in the Northeast of America. Like they're saying like this was around during the founding fathers and stuff. And so like, it's got, it's a really good story where it's like, it's making you feel all the things about race, right? Where like the black girl, she's like at a party and it's like all white people and they're playing like hip hop music and shit, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like that kind of awkwardness and it's like, what parts of this song are y'all about to sing? You know? Right. Right. And then it's like, she's uh, another such scenario. She's like at, um, hanging out with some friends and like somebody spills something and they're like, oh yes, you can clean that up, right? Go ahead and clean that up. She didn't spill anything, but you know, stuff like that. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'm here for it. And then like Regina Hall's character, she's just so numb to all of it that, you know, people are doing like racist stuff around her and she's like, no, that's okay. Everything's okay. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. So is it a movie or a series? It's a movie and it's a it's a horror movie. It's got a horror tint to it. I'm not gonna get into the horror part of it. The horror part is pretty good and interesting. Um I feel like so this is one of those movies, and I've there's only a handful of these movies I've experienced where this movie is like in my personal scale of five out of five, like you are hitting every check mark. Like I'm like, you're doing it like. Just don't trip at the finish line. Like this, this movie is like excellent. I'm gonna recommend this to everybody. And then it did something so egregious that I'm like, Mm-mm, this is a one star movie now. <laughs> wow. So I'm about to spoil this movie. So like it hit all the beats of like racism and it's like the different facets of racism, right? Like where you know you're trying to like co-mingle with people of other races, but like these there's these little things that you're just not comfortable with. Or like you are, or with the the the, the black lady that's a, a teacher, like she's like very outspoken and black, and she's like, I'm not gonna let these things drag me down. And then you got to the racism to the point where Regina Hall's like, I'm just numb to it, like I just I'm just going with the flow, right? And so it turns out that the black teacher that um, is like very outspoken. She is um, actually, you guys remember Rachel Dozal? Yeah. <clears throat> That's basically what she is. It turns out that she's white. Oh. And I'm like, wait, what? And so, like, you find this, like, there's, like, literally 15 minutes of the movie left, and this comes out of nowhere. They address it for less than five minutes, and then they move on. And I'm like, if you cut this out, nothing in this movie changes so like why did you need to add this and so and so like yeah like this movie literally did too much i'm like this is like a perfect movie like you said so many things about race in this country right now and then you had to add that why like that is such a rare scenario like to our knowledge that has happened one time why did that need to be in this movie right or has it happened one just one time that's fair that's fair but like that's just so rare and we were just hitting us hitting hitting the audience with like raw racial stuff you know like very poignant so i right. do not recommend this movie okay can i can i watch it all the way up to the very end the stop so the thing is like the way it the way it totally ends is very good but like they just had to throw that part in there right before that part Mm. so i mean watch it if you want but like just know like it's gonna have a really stupid part and i i didn't touch on the supernatural stuff but just like incredible okay um but yeah so it's been a year since we've done this so matt what uh, actually let me ask you this match have you have you listened to any episodes of this podcast listen to a few so um can i ask you what do you remember your take was on the episodes that you've listened to 
because okay. I assume you've listened to other podcasts. I have some. I was like, that person's a guest. Um, those are my friends. That was my first initial reaction to some of those. Uh, but um, listening to you guys talk about different things and get into in depth about things, I was like, oh, okay. Um, I thought it was a different take um, on a lot of things, on a lot of different issues and topics. So I, I was like, okay, they're onto something. That's kind of cool. Uh, the first. I don't know what what your art was at first, but then I like when, when you guys changed the art. So then I was like, okay, that makes people like really want to be like, oh, let me touch that. And yeah, it was it's a it was a placeholder. Okay, so yeah, so I thought it was cool, um, but yeah, I had a, a it was like some up and down moments for me. It was like, okay, the topics are good, the conversations are good. Some of those hosts are, uh, yeah, that was, I thought it was cool. I think you guys are doing a great job. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, Matt. Well, what's the last year been like for you? uh it's been trying i mean it's like uh it's been hit or miss sometimes sometimes you know we do this and um you like you know this where when we get done recording we talk about stuff and it's like as we record and we talk about something and me and you we like oh this is the best thing we've done this is going to be hidden and then it don't do nothing. And like, then we when do you say don't do nothing, like, wait, wait, wait. When you say don't do nothing, you mean it doesn't get a lot of clicks. Yeah, it doesn't get a lot of clicks and listens. And But then when we do something where it's like, all right, it's okay. And it gets a lot of likes. And I'm still going to put it out to this day. Whatever y'all doing, listen to that fucking Meteor Man podcast. Yes, yes. That's the one who, like, to me, that's the one where we was clicking on all cylinders. Yes. The content, the content was amazing. Like we put that's our heart into that. One episode for us is that Meter Man episode. Yes. And like we we've done like other movies where it's like a Disney movie or whatever. Where I'm not I'm not gonna say we half ass it. That's not the right word. But you know you know some topics, some movies hit you differently, and you have passion for it, and you're going in, and you have a lot of great stuff to talk about. That's what was on that Meteor Man episode. So it's like sometimes it's kind of disheartening when yeah. you're like, oh, this is what, like, if we, because we always base this off, if we like it, then the audience likes it. So we thought that was going to be hitting, but it's not. But then, you know, we'll do a Disney movie where, you know, it's a new movie or something. So we talk about it. We just, I don't say go through the motions because that's not what we do. But, you know, there's not, it's, not that enthusiasm for it and that one will have a lot of likes so it's, it's kind of hard to we want to give the people what they want but it's kind of hard to figure out what they want because it's a roller coaster it's all it up is. and down it's, far. it's not us. like every pixar movie we do gets a lot or every black movie we do gets a lot yeah. but i mean we do know there is one constant that gets a lot of likes but as far as content is concerned it's still trial and error to figure it out no i 100% agree with you and like for me personally because like i edit the episodes so like i live with them a little bit longer than you and so like episodes where it's like we recorded well over an hour and when i say that like yes some episodes are like up to 90 minutes i mean when we record for like two hours with somebody like those are like for me personally some of the better episodes that we do but it annoys me to no end to have to remove content from it because another thing that we have learned over this year is that if these episodes are too long you guys won't listen to them and I get it I, I truly do get it but it does hurt to remove that content because at the end of the day we'd rather you guys listen to some of it than none of it Right. Um, and also we learned that um, you guys don't like when we do uh, continuous episodes. Like if we do a part one and a part two, <laughs> you guys love part one. Part two, y'all do not care for it. <laughs> man, when we saw, oh man, that Fair Street episode, I think we went for like what maybe two and a half hours or something like that. And it's like that first ep that part one is like almost was not it's, it's really high up in our rankings. 
like really high up match like i'll show you when we stop recording we're like netflix we don't actually show numbers or anything like that okay. to the public but like that first episode did incredible and then the second episode we're like wait where is it at oh yeah. let, let, let me scroll to the bottom here <laughs> But, um, but yeah, so uh, another thing is I, and I've said this so many times on this ep- on this show, I just appreciate when we can say, hey, um, Renetta, hey, Shatia, hey, Madge, people that we used to work with, you, you want to come on our show? And they're like, yeah, and we just come on. And it's like, there hasn't been years that have passed since we've all seen each other, you know? Mm-hmm. And we could just, you know, just just chit chat and it's a good time you know like i and like that's the thing that i really loved about that job we all we all worked at was the community like i like real talk i love you guys so much like if it weren't for you guys like it would have been so hard getting through a lot of those days and i just appreciate that we can still come back together and like pick that up for like a couple of hours on a on a saturday night you know yeah. Right. But yeah. And also, like, I genuinely appreciate like the new people that we have met along the way. Like, Josh is a pretty cool dude. He finally sent us his book, and we're gonna read it at some point. And like, if I can ever get back to Europe, like, I would love to actually meet him in person. You know. Right. And then you know, Francis. She's cool. She's cool. People uh, should be back soon. Yeah, Francis. We have uh, um, Sky. What is uh, what? Sky or Sky Fodder? What's what's the? Oh, oh, Carlin. Carlin from the um Starfighter full movie podcast. There we go. I was Carlin's good people. We need we need to hit him back up. Right. So like, yeah, all the guests we've had on, um, like that we've met that you met through that we met through Reddit and other sources like that to be on the podcast. Um, all the guests we've had. Um, yeah, I just want to thank all of y'all because another thing that we learned uh, is you guys really don't like it when it's just me and Chad here. <laughs> those, I mean... episodes, <laughs> those episodes when it's just me and Chad don't be, y'all really like when we have a guest involved on this. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we don't like it when it's just you and me either. Nah, it was, it was fun at first because we was like, yeah, and then, but it's like, we also text each other daily and stuff like that. Yeah. So when it's time to record, it's like, what you've been up to? We already know. You know what you've been up to. <laughs> so it's not to say. So we, we need somebody else in here to to communicate with, because I already know everything that's going on. Right. Um. So going forward, like, what do you hope to do these next 50 episodes, Matt? Like outside they, of out, outside of grow our audience because yeah, duh. Of course we want to do that. The biggest thing I want going forward is crowd engagement. Mm. Um it doesn't of course, like you said, of course you want to get bigger numbers and everything else like that. But even with the numbers we have now, I would be more happy if we had feedback the ratings on there not even the stars but if you had ratings for people like oh i like this i didn't like this or they emailed us and everything it's because like i said right now we do not know we i mean we can we're basing what the listeners like based off the 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 clicks and the view and the views and the downloads but if somebody were like oh i do not like this that you guys do this or I love when you guys do this, it will help us more. It will help us out a lot to be able to make a product that people like. But right now we don't have that, a lot of engagement like that. So we're just trying to figure it out by ourselves. So going forward, I'm looking for, hopefully we can get more engagement with the listeners like that. Yeah. What about you, Chad? um i that 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 is good um i would like that as well but um mostly just more guest diversity like yeah we if you look at returning guests obviously we have favorites but um i do want some new voices like more people we used to work with and also 
more people with podcasts or heck more more new people like if you've never been on the podcast but you've got an opinion about a movie come on let's hear it you know I love talking about movies like that's my thing like when I'm on somebody else's podcast it's generally about movies like I light up because like that's a new person I can share my love of film with so I like talking about movies I want new people to talk about movies too uh, we're going to breeze over this oh, slightly just because Madge hasn't seen it, but Bel Air, uh, you finished it, right, Matt? Yes. Uh, did, do you know who the special guest star was for this last episode, Madge? Yes, it was okay. Marlon Wayans. Yes, so Marlon Wayans came in to play Will's dad. Right. Um, I'm going to be very honest. I don't like, as a whole, how quickly they have run through storylines from original Fresh Prince. Like, Uncle Phil running for DA was a storyline. Um, Will and his dad was a storyline. Yeah. Like, they drug out the storyline. Well, they didn't even really drag it out because, like, the whole inciting incident that got Will to Bel Air, they handled that for, like, three or four episodes and then they dropped it. And, like, that could have been the whole season. But what are we doing here and so I mean, like oh no go ahead sorry so like no so what i'm saying is like the fear of like them coming to bel-air and killing will they could have drug that out the entire season and then they could have resolved it the way that they resolved it which they got rid of the, they resolved it like an episode four or three or four mm-hmm. but that could that should have been like an episode 10 resolution right it could have been now not i mean I like that they're bringing in the old theories and I mean uh, storylines from the original, um, but yeah, they could have they could have stretched things out. Yeah, yeah, and like my whole thing is like, so I personally don't have a good healthy relationship with my father. He was not around when I was growing up, and so that in the original Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I could just look at that clip of Will crying to Uncle Phil saying, how come he don't love me, man? And like, I bust out crying because like that, that's an emotional trigger for me. And so this. Want want me, want me. Thank you. Well, yeah. How come he don't want me? What'd I say? Love Uh, me. Love me. Yeah, yeah. And so when in this new version, I'm like, I don't feel anything with any of this. And also, it feels like they wasted Marlon Wayans. I disagree in the sense of I got emotional on those two episodes. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm old now, so things hit me more. And as far as, like, father relationship, you know, even with my real father and everything. And um, let me excuse, let me take that back. Sorry. I have a real father, mm-hmm. uh, my biological father. There we go. Um, and then also with my son. So like, it hits me a little bit different where the, uh, wait, so wait, you didn't get care for um, uh, Carlton and Will and everything, or at the end where he was like, when he cried to Lisa, talking about he loves them and everything. What, was the, he, what was the point of that if he wasn't going to be the one to find Will? Because he, it was emotion. He, he's going to miss him. He needs to find him. Yeah, I didn't care for that. And also, like, just because an actor is on the payroll does not mean that they need to be in every episode. And you know who I'm talking about. That's true. With any show. Oh, wait, you don't who, know. Who who, wait, wait, about. I don't know who you're talking about. Who are you talking about? Uh, it's a character we hate on this show. Is it Carl? Oh. Uh, and yeah, don't, yeah. Don't, say don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. No, you I know you're talking about. No, 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 because right. you're gonna watch. Right. You're gonna watch it soon. I am. Right. And this person, a to me, should not even been on the season at right. all. Right. And this person, you right, does not need to be on every episode. Correct. So, like, this is where I agree with you. Where about what you said earlier about them adding too much stuff on there. Because this person should not have been introduced at all yet. If you had a couple seasons and everything else like that, you can't just watch a 
all the seasons of Fresh Prince, I don't know how many how many there were, and be like, yeah, I'm gonna pick this, I'm gonna pick this, I'm gonna <laughs> pick this, and we're about to put all of it in one season. No, because it doesn't make sense that way. I mean, but also, I mean, you're right, you're right, because also Hillary moving out was a big thing on the original show, and we did that right. in season one. Right, all the stuff that they did, uh, Hillary moving out, um, Will and his father, um. Like all the stuff, all the big storyline stuff they put in this season to where I understand you want to have some stuff, but like a lot of this stuff, like for example, they stretched out this Will's father thing all the way to the last episode. The DA thing, it I, I'm critiquing this stuff, but overall I did enjoy the whole thing. Yeah, same um, here, same here. I did. Like I, I tuned in every week. It was right. six seasons uh, of the original Fresh Prince. Six? Okay. So I, I'm critiquing this, even though I loved it, uh, everything. Um, I loved how they updated things. So before Hillary was on TV web doing weather, now she's an influencer. It makes more sense. Yeah, it makes sense for the time. Stuff. Right. Um, but I just, I don't know. I, those last two episodes, it was, I, got, I got in my feels. And as far as Marlon, I think he did a fine job. I'm not uh, saying he didn't. I really liked it. With, huh? I'm not saying he didn't do a good job. I'm saying I feel like because Marlon Wayans is a good actor when he's not doing that silly stuff. Like mm-hmm. he can do dramatic stuff, but you bring him in here and he basically has like two scenes. And it's Marlon Wayans. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is just the beginning to where he's going to have a more active role on season two. That's a possibility. That could be. But I, I, I did thought it was funny to when they were having a, a good conversation and next thing you know... Um, he, 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 uh, he, uh, Marlon trying to choke Will? Right, yeah. When he, when he put his... When he's like, he grabbed, he grabbed him by his throat. Uh, but like, um, personal note, like when he was... Um, when he started talking about his mother and that one hit me because I've had conversations with my biological father and he has said stuff like that. And I had to check him and be like, you're not going to talk about my mother. I don't care how y'all stuff uh, right. ended. You're not going to be just talking like that. So I felt something in there where I would have done the same thing and everything else like that. But I thought it was, um, Good. I didn't like the whole shit with Jeffrey. I thought Will. I mean, I thought Phil was being a little bitch like that. How you going? <laughs> this man, man, been doing all of your dirt and everything through all these years, and now he does one thing that he felt in his heart that he should have been done, and you like, all right, I'm gonna fire him. So it's kind of like that took not less respect, but like it knocked Phil for me down. Yeah, as the season went on, I was like, I'm good on Phil. Right. Cause and then and that's another thing that like Phil on the show, he was the the uplifting person. He's yeah. the one who did everything and every stuff like that. To where here, there everybody in there is doing something that they shouldn't be doing, or they're hiding something, or like that. Drama so, for the sake of drama. Right, drop right. They, but you can have one person that's good. Right. So, uh, but to be clear, we both really like the show. Yes. <laughs> with, with all that negativity, <laughs> we really enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, so just to hop on something we can all talk about for a moment. What did you think of Moon Knight match? Oh, wait, can I start this off real quick? I wanted to say something first. Okay. Oh, hey, look here. Sure. So with Moon Knight, I knew nothing of. Never heard of this character. Doesn't know. Don't know no powers, no nothing. And then when they first announced it, I was like, cool. I didn't look nothing up. So then when I watched it, it was refreshing because this is the first Marvel character where I knew nothing about. Even the smallest, like, you know, Ant-Man or whoever, Captain yeah. Marvel. I knew little bits about this. But this character, I knew nothing. So since I knew nothing to me, this was more exciting for me to watch. Okay. Because I knew nothing, so I was paying more attention to every single thing going on to learn. Because like normally, you know, once you get done watching something, you look it up and everything. 
I haven't done that with this one, and I'm not. I'm going oh. to base everything I know off off this TV show. Okay. okay. But, but but with that being said, I enjoyed it because I don't I don't know what to expect. It's not like oh I'm waiting for uh, Ben Parker to die so we can get his power. I'm not. It's like I don't know what I'm <laughs> I don't know what I'm waiting for. So I don't know what's going to happen. So I'm I'm intrigued with all of this. Why okay. is the gla- Why is the guy got glasses in his? I mean shards of glass in his shoes. What does that, that really crazy. power do? And everything like everything is exciting and new to me. So. I'm into it. And plus his costume look badass too. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, it does look pretty cool. Man. So I um I don't know, like Matt, I don't know anything about the character as well. So I never even heard of this person. So watching it, I really liked the first episode. I was like, oh, that was a teaser I need. I wish that Disney did like two episodes at one mm-hmm. time. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> like man. So uh my husband and I were watching it. And so he's like, um, since the guy, the the multiple personality, I guess that's what it is, name is Mark. He was like, is he, is he connected to Cleopatra? So he was going all oh, deep. Oh, of course, of the Egyptian yeah. stuff. Okay. So he was going deep into that one. And I was just like, I, he, I mean, did he know that he has multiple personalities? Or like, what did he think the other personality was doing? Like, I got other questions. I was like, he never looked around his apartment and found no stuff. Like, I was, I, I wanted to know more about what did he think he was did he really think that like he was up all night or what did he really think was going on um in those in those moments where he don't where he just didn't know so that all was right. what my thoughts were overall what you think of it i i like it i give it like 50 thumbs up i cannot wait <laughs> for the next episode so i am like really like oh i wonder what's gonna happen next and like matt i haven't looked up anything either so which is abnormal for me normally i'm like looking it up like crazy i haven't looked Clicking up also. anything so I really want to know like what's going on with him. A good character and great pick, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm with it. Like I was a little bit familiar with the character. Like I own a couple of the comic books. There was a um pretty good run, maybe 2011, 2012, something like that, where uh Moon Knight, because you know, every Marvel character lives in New York in the comic books. And yeah. so he moved out to LA to fight crime there. And he was like, like, oh yeah, I'm teaming up with Wolverine and Captain America. And they're out here for some reason. And then at the end of the first issue, you realize that it, it, those are all his multiple personalities. Oh, that's right. And so like, that's something that he, he was in that storyline. He's dressing up as those other characters and fighting crime also. Oh, <laughs> So it's it's a pretty good little run. What you say? My man? other thought was, why did it take the for the other guy, Ethan Hawke's character, to come after him for his other personality to really start talking to him? Like he ain't never talked to you before. Before I you mean, start getting chased, it's a possibility that he has, but then something happened to make him forget. Yeah, yeah, it's a possibility. I, I'm not sure what, what's going to happen. But yeah, like I don't. I like I know some Moon Knight stuff. Like I knew about the multiple personality stuff going in. But, like, I'm very intrigued. Like, I don't know anything about, like, his main, main villains. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming that's what Ethan Hawke is. One the thing that gets villains. me, I, I want to know is, I want to know what his powers. Because mm-hmm. uh, all I know is, this, you know, he fought that demon. But I'm like, was this just a, is this a, a Batman, just fisticuff type of, of powers he got? Or does he, he have magic? Strength? Does he, right, magic is like, that's the part where I, I'm waiting for them to reveal and stuff like that. Yeah. I feel like it may be magic since it's tied. To, I feel like since it's tied to Egyptian, I feel yeah. like it could be like a little bit of, of the magic. Pup. But he probably do got them hands though too. I mean, he's definitely got those hands. <laughs> 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 that that uh that demon thing was crawling out like no nah, no more right. tapping out. <laughs> Man, now that was I liked their first episode. So. But uh, all right, we're going to lightly um, 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 breeze over Halo. Um, I really liked the first episode. Um, I like back in the day, I was a big Halo guy because I was an Xbox guy. Um, so I was really feeling it. Uh, second episode, I didn't like. I concur. <laughs> uh, I didn't like when they took his helmet off. I know, yeah. I know this is part of the storyline and everything like that, but I'm like, once you take his helmet off, you lose that mystique, mystique. or, yeah. yeah. Um, so I know it's a TV show, they got to do it, but once they took that off, I was like, I don't know. 
I'm still going to watch it, but I'm just like, it, I don't know. It just it lost some of the luster once he took his helmet off. I get that. But like you said, the first episode, I enjoyed it, really. I'm like, oh, they got the sword in there. Oh, they doing this. Yeah, like, yeah. I was really into it. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, maybe, yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. I mean, I take that back. It's good. But yeah, uh, just that helmet part, uh, it kind of did drag on a little bit more on the second episode. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna keep watching it and just to see how this play plays out. Cause also, with what she, what's the clone lady called? Um, mm, no. Nope. What she call it? The sister, the protocol. No. Whatever. Not, but let's not do that. People who watch it know what I'm talking about. But uh, to see how that plays out and the storylines and everything. But. Also, their haircut is fucked up. I meant to tell you, I saw the <laughs> first episode on that um on that um mag was it Mago, whatever the island was. I mean, the, the place where they, yeah. Why they all got that fucked up haircut? <laughs> That's what I kept thinking. It's like a mullet with a bus coming on the side. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I ain't got no barbers here. Uh that's the first, that's the first thing. They and they all had that haircut. So I don't know why they had that haircut like that. But come on, y'all. Y'all need y'all need to do better than that. All right, y'all might as well go bald then. That probably would have been better. <laughs> All right, and with that, this week, after a very long year, we finally discuss two distinct strangers. Hey! A man trying to get home to his dog gets stuck in a time loop that forces him to relive a deadly run-in with a cop. I don't even know where to start, as in who should start with this. Oh, okay. okay Mad, Mad, Mad just volunteering. Because blindly, I did not read any of that before I watched the movie. And I only saw the little picture of the guy and the girl in the bed. So I was like, oh, two distant strangers. They, they hooked up. And so like a dummy, I was like, oh, okay. So I, when I turn it on, I'm like, okay, well, they're waking up from their lovely night. And I'm thinking they're going to like play their night over again, like what they did before they got there. And yeah, I, I was about to have a panic attack each time. It was, it was like really getting to me. I was like, oh my goodness. So, um, first thing I thought, he just called his dog through an Alexa machine and gave it some treats. I was like, I'm one of them things for my dog. Okay. So and, first of all, uh, let's not use that word. What? Alexa. That, that A word. My bad. We, okay, we, want, Amy, we don't want we don't want to activate anybody's device, but uh, go on. That, that Amy liked device. I call <laughs> mine Amy. Um, but I thought that was cool at first. I was like, oh man, that's dope. I want one of them. Like I'm trying to feed Dempsey like that. Like Dempsey, I'll be home in a minute. Get these treats. <laughs> so I thought that was cool, not knowing what was gonna happen because my stupid butt did not read the previews. So yeah, I was go like, on. Oh. go on. So when he gets outside and he bumps into a dude, he's like, oh, my bad, uh, whatever. And then the police officer, then once the police officer was was had the foot on the neck, then I said, okay, this is where he's going. And he dies and then he wakes up again in the bedroom. And I was like, is this about to happen again? So, so yeah, for me, it was a lot. So I wrote some notes. I had to write notes down on this one and I barely ever write notes about nothing. But number one, I was like, 99, when he said how many times it went through as far as like him keep talking to the man, I was like, 99 times? Like, you done went through this 99 times and you, you still trying to figure out uh, how you can get, just stay alive like 99 times? And, and it's not even that, like, at no point did you ever change up your strategy? Well, he did. He took the shirt off one time. He tried to run out. Like, he was like, oh, my bad. The, before he ran into the dude with the coffee, he didn't run into him. Like, he tried, like, different things. They weren't working. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm, about to, I'm about to sound like that guy for a moment. Okay, let me hear but, that. But, like, at least in the scenarios that we saw, when he was like, hey, man, um, let me see this bag. And he was like, no, I know my rights. If you know that the day is going to repeat, what happens if you're like, here's my bag, officer? Oh, I get you. Yeah. So then my next thing was, well, what state they in? So I thought at first they were in California, but then I think someone said they were in New York. Well, I was like, well, if they in a legal state, so the most you're going to get for your 
funny cigarette is a ticket. I was like, so that I felt like that was like they were, you like that that don't smell like tobacco or whatever the uh the police officer kept saying. And I then I was like, well, how did his money keep falling out of his dang on pocket? Well, at one time it was in his pocket. But anyway, okay, so let me go back to my little note. So uh I said I was like, I would not have trusted that when I said I wouldn't have trusted that police officer like that for me to sit in his car and for him to drive me home. I thought that was crazy. And when he said, oh, I can't ride in the front. I'd have been arrested before. Now, it was a stupid. I got arrested over a ticket. So it ain't no crazy crime I got arrested over um, years ago. But he sat me in the front seat. He was ripped. It was a dog in the back, though. But I got sat in the front seat. I mean, at least at least at least you got priority over the dog right you know yeah i was like i said the front seat i was like he way too comfortable in this back seat of this man's police car he over there talking about his partner or what type of partner he got and chit-chatting you 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 too comfortable on your ride home in the back of this police car i, was, I knew it was gonna be something that was gonna happen after that and then when he was like this is the best one yet and then he shot him i was like so he knew this whole time that what was going on himself or whatever yeah, he was in the loop also, yeah. Yeah, so I, at first, I really thought that he didn't know from when he had that conversation. I was like, I did what? And that was what? Like, he really convinced me. Like, he really didn't know. So I just thought that that was, I was just like, that's that's really, really crazy. And I want one of them, elect, I mean, them uh, and things for my dog. And, <laughs> um, and the only thing that you can think of at the end of the movie, if that you're going to make it home to your fucking dog, like, it ain't like I want to be alive. Like, I can do anything I need to do so I can stay alive. I'm going to do anything I need to do so I can get home to my fucking dog. Fuck that dog. What about your life? And did you peep when he got shot um, oh, by his yeah, house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. That, that's trivia at the end. We'll, we'll, okay, we'll talk about I was going to say the puddle. We, the, we, we, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Okay, my bad thing. You, you did peep that though? Matt, uh, Matt what were your thoughts? I did not like this at all. I am not for this black trauma. And to me, this is we're talking about horror movies. This is the scariest movie of it all. Imagine a, as a black man, every day you leave your house, a cop kills you, and you have to do it again the next day. Um, I did not like this movie. Or right, okay, let me tell you this. Let me let me rephrase that. It's okay to say you I don't did not like, like it. this plot. <laughs> I don't like this scenario. Uh, the movie was fine. I did not like the scenario. Um, whoever thought of this is a crazy mf -er, and um, they should probably have go to therapy because this is not something that you should be putting on TV. For uh, I am uh, all of the above. Did not like it as far as that aspect. Now, now talk about the movie itself. Uh, Joey Badass, I think Joey Badass did a good uh, good acting on this. I, I don't know how much acting he has done before he's, this. He's, um, I'm guessing neither of you have seen Mr. Robot. No, I haven't. No, he I is just one know of, him from uh, uh, Raising Canaan right now. Okay, he's one of the best characters on uh, Mr. Robot. He's not oh. on it a lot, but when he, when his character comes up, you're like, oh snap, this is gonna be this is gonna be a good one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he does. So that's good. But yeah, he he was good uh, on that. Um, like like Max said about. I mean, he must really love his dog there, where okay. his whole thing was every single time was like you said. Not I need to make it out here alive. I just gotta get to my dog. He really loves it. Especially the weird part about it. Especially like most people like. Oh, I really needed. I really need to feed my dog. You can feed your dog from your phone, so it's really not that dire. That I mean, you the know. dog probably needs to be let out to pee. Yeah, he did say that. He was like, don't pee oh, in the okay. apartment. I'm going to be right there to take you out. So he did say that at the first time he died. He said that to him. Hmm. But, he was yeah, to so, him. yeah, Chad, you know I'm not here for these black trauma movies. I don't care how good it is, but uh, yeah, I don't I do not do this. Well, I, I got don't, another one. Uh, Huh? Oh, girl ain't shit, cause she ain't help him. He told her <laughs> every time well, when we finally started opening up about what happened or whatever. He told her all them times she ain't helping out not one time. Right, like maybe no and like switch it up. Life. You don't may, maybe you need to go out with her or have her go to your house and you stay at home. Exactly. So, so I also did not like this movie. 
and I've had to hold that hold that in for a year now. Um, like yeah, seeing the neck, the the the, the knee on the neck, or not, you know, not it was a knee on the neck. Seeing him being choked out at the beginning, I'm like, mm, I'm not trying to see any of this. Mm-mm. No. Um, I will say the acting was good. It yeah. was believable. Obviously, extremely topical. It has some twists and turns, but it's like. <sighs> It wanted to give a message more than it wanted to tell a cohesive story. It definitely Correct. did give a message. It was a, it's a great conversation piece. It, but, but also my question is, who is this movie for? Because who will actually see this movie? Black people and um, white allies will see this movie. The people that need to see this movie won't. So why can't the people that at least see the movie get a story? And what I mean by that is, have you both of you have seen Groundhog's Day, right? Yes. Right. So when you usually have these scenarios where, you know, the day is repeating, the character is one way at the beginning and at the end, they are another way, in some ways, a better person mm-hmm. because right. of the having to relive this experience. Now, I understand that they want to have like the messaging of, this is this is a a a cycle that will never stop as in you know the police brutality i get that and it's like we there are no simple solutions but like there are some solutions like granted we're 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 seeing it a lot more now because we have cameras in our phones but there are some small measures to try and make things somewhat better and this movie makes it so bleak. And I'm not saying you need to have a happy tent. I'm just saying, like, I'm not even saying it should have had a happy ending, but, like, the character didn't grow. Right. So what was the no, point? I get what you meant. What was the point of this? I will I say, agree. Again, um, well, I don't know what the point was, because, like you said, if it's just going to be um, uh, minorities watching this that have went through police brutalities, um and allies like it 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 doesn't really do anything the, um it starts a conversation amongst each other like oh man did you what would you have done differently um and things like of that nature um it made me think at the when the credits went I was like it was names on there that I had never heard of before so then it made me want to like go back and look up their stories um but then I still have him because it's like, well, you you pretty much know how it ended. So do I really need to look up the story? I just need to know their names and, you know, right. and, and think about them as a person. Like, wow, um, it it just was a, a very unsettling movie. Yeah. Yeah, that's, so, that's a perfect word for it. Yes. Yeah, it really was. Um, I do want to um, make a recommendation. A movie very similar to this, but a lot better. It's called See You Yesterday. It's on Netflix. Um, Spike Lee produced it. Have either of you heard of it? No, I haven't. So it's sort of like a black back to the future. And it even has a cameo from Michael J. Fox. Uh, It's about a pair of like black teens that make a time machine. And one of their siblings is killed by the police. So they go back and stop that from happening. But things get worse because of that change. So the pair constantly go back to try and fix the ripple effects that they created. So they're like, okay, if I if we save the brother, but also do this, then this won't happen. But right. then something else happens. It's a really good movie. I highly recommend that instead of this movie. Right. Okay. I might give that one a chance. Um, speaking of not watching black trauma, I haven't. I haven't had the chance. I haven't made myself watch uh, the movie on the Exonerated Five, so I still have it in my watch list. I've had it in my watch list this whole time, and I just I can't. Is that the Central Park Five? Yeah. Okay. Um, I haven't. I just I just can't watch it. I don't know why. Like normally, I I watch. I'm a big fan of the story Roots, and I love Alex Haley' take on finding his roots. So I'm like a big Roots fan. Like I love Roots, the movie. Not like like. The situation that happened in Roots, but how he went about finding his roots and knowing um, all the different African phrases, like that's what I'm a fan of, like those type of things. Um, but I can't, I just, 
I just can't make myself watch that movie. I don't I don't know why, but I mean they I see how they are now, so I know the outcome was different, but watching that movie, I I can't do it. So I get no, that. I totally agree. Like Chad knows uh I don't do black trauma movies. I don't like any of this slave shit. Or even that movie you was referring to um, earlier about uh the Master. Was it like a horror movie. Yeah. yeah, it was like I don't want to go like once I saw the trailer and no, that none of that I need to go and uh, watch or anything like that. Yeah, I'm not here. I do not support that kind of stuff. People making this need to do better. We don't need to relive this stuff where people you got people living through this life on a daily basis and it's not for entertainment purposes. So right uh, and like and like that's that's part of the problem too because this movie won an Oscar. Why? Right. Because it's black trauma. Like yeah, we right. make a happy black movie and nobody want to talk about that. Exactly. So, and you have people every day living through this type of stuff. We don't need to be glorifying this, put it on the big screen. I know some people say, might say, um, well, other people need to see this. No, they don't. Well, nobody but that's the thing. The people that are going to see it are us and allies. Right. So can so, we get something that, you know, we want, not want to see, but can we get something that's not going to depress the hell out of us? Right. So, yeah. So I do not support any type of these movies. We don't need to be going um, slave stuff. I've never seen Amistad. Um, I've seen Roots before because, you know, our parents and everything always made us watch Roots. But any 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 kind of stuff like this, I ain't here for unless it's some Django stuff where he's shooting back at him, then maybe I can watch this stuff. But any of this stuff like that, nah, it's uh I'm not here for that. Did you did either you see Lovecraft Country? No, I haven't seen it. I heard it was really good. Uh I actually want to start watching it. Matt? No, I have not. So I I was like, yeah, I hate that black trauma stuff too. And I, I was eating up that first season. And then I really thought about it. I was like, oh, hold up that was all black trauma but but i will say that um each episode essentially put black people in a type of genre you're not used to seeing them in so the first episode was like this is a horror movie like monsters are coming but with black people like road 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 trip horror movie like jeepers creepers jeepers creepers that type of thing and then they had another episode that was kind of like National Treasure, but with black people. So there is a lot of black trauma in that because it's set like in the 60s. And so yeah. you got that stuff going on. But then it's like, but we're also having a fun adventure. Like another one was a, 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 like a, a, a ghost in the house story, but with black people. So right. there is black trauma in, in Lovecraft Country, but it's really good. And also, what's that other movie where it was supposed to be like um, this lady, it was slave time, and she runs away, and then she comes out, out the woods, oh, and then she knows yeah. the 1960s. Antebellum. F- forget that movie. Yeah, it was just like, come on, y'all. Y'all just can't do, y'all can't make a, it don't have to be about slave shit. You don't, it's, I'm just tired of it. It's, and I'm not supporting any of that type of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. What do you guys think the Rotten Tomatoes was on this movie? Now, in order to make sure we don't have to do this twice, I'm going to tell you that there are 16 critic reviews on this movie. So, and remember, it's an average. So what do you think the Rotten Tomatoes is on this movie? Mag, you can go first. They probably gave it a high rating. Probably gave it like a 75 or an 80. Yeah, that's why I was leaning up there. So I go with uh, a 78. So there's 16 reviews, guys. And I did something I never did before. I actually read these reviews. It got a 94%. Oh. And I was like, how many of these people are Black? I saw one Black reviewer that gave this a positive review. One Black reviewer gave it a negative review and a whole bunch of white people that was eating this up with a spoon. What were the type of comments they were making about this movie? This is the kind of story that we need in our day and age. Very riveting, timely, that kind of crap. Uh, 
No, that's trash. So they, they like to see a cop kill a black man. What every, is a white know? person supposed to say about this movie? Because that's who chose to review it. Inspired, insightful, and uniquely impactful. This is another one. This film can be seen as somewhat obvious and manipulative, but also as a quite creative one when it comes to constructing a powerful essay about the heartbreaking consequences of systematic racism. What? Mm. Well, I mean, I guess if uh, you don't relate to this or see this and you're like, oh, this is just I, I understand what they're trying to say. It's a good movie. This is but... another, This is one of those situations where white people can't be critical of this movie. Right, right. They're put in a box. Yeah. Yeah. Um, trivia. So this one, you don't have options, but um, during the movie, Carter gets a ride from the police officer. He comments on how apparently it is illegal for a citizen to sit in the passenger seat of a police car, even though Madge just debunked that, and says, that Kevin Hart movie was a lie. What Kevin Hart movie is he referring to? Right, right along. along. Yeah. Look, I didn't like this movie, so like, I really, I really wasn't trying with trivia this week, to be honest. <laughs> um, so let's see here. Oh, I thought I wrote it down. So when he dies at the end, his uh, blood is in the shape of the country of Africa, the continent of Africa. Yeah. Mm. Um, the title is, that. yeah, the title is most likely a nod to Tupac's song Changes, which features the line, learn to see me as a brother instead of two distinct strangers. Mm. And um, yeah, this movie won best picture for a short film. That's special. Yeah. So um, once more, Match, thank you so much for coming on the show and especially this episode. Like it was um, a pleasure. It's so I mean, I wanted to I want to say it's so nice talking to you, but like we the three of us talk every single day. <laughs> yeah, we, we really do. But it's good seeing you guys. I mean, yeah. I don't think they're gonna see that we see each other like this, but no, it's great seeing you guys because it's like, man, I really haven't it's different talking than it is talking on our chat than it was talking at the desk though. but right. i do greatly appreciate our friendship and um and the way that it's grown over the years is, is really cool yeah it has um yeah so before i do my little outro um i do want to say thank you to all the previous guests we've had on here um i want to say thank you to anna Michelle, Courtney, Laurent, Chris, Sarah, Lindsay, Samantha, Dominique, Phoenix from the Internet Was a Mistake podcast, Jordan, Will, Nelson, Steve, Michael from the Green Room podcast, Melissa, LaMitchell, Renetta, Deanna, our cousin Josh, Shatia, Joe, Bree, Laura, Sharon, the other Sarah, Rachel, Fran, Vera, Jamie, John, Caitlin, Carlin from the Starfighter Full Movie Podcast, Kamaya, Sativa, Francis from the Happy Fangirl Podcast, Cody, Caesar, Yasio, and Match. Thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your Saturday night and talking movies with us. I cannot tell you how much we appreciate you. And thank you, listeners, so much for listening. Please rate, like, and review our podcast on your platform of choice. If you have any feedback, please email us at weusetotalkpod at gmail.com. Like our Facebook page, we used to talk about this at work. And follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at we used to talk Pod. Come back next week when we'll do something. I don't know what, and I won't be there. It's Matt's show, but he'll tell you about that later. Sure. And like always, I don't know if this was a good episode. I don't know if it was a bad episode. But whatever you think about it, talk it up, talk about it at work. Thank you for listening. And thank you guys. 50 episodes. We really appreciate it. 50 more to go. Thank you. Uh-huh.